Hello again there everyone, this is Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks. Welcome back, uh, continuing the build on this ARC model 48th scale German Type 7 submarine. We are going to talk about trimming. All right, when we talk about trimming, there's certain uh, principles that we need to adhere to. There's three kind of simple rules for trimming that I have come up with. I'm going to go through them uh, one at a time with you. First of all, rule number one, mount the cylinder as low as you can in the hull. The reason for that is that your weight, uh, as you can see in this model, um, is much more compact than the foam. So it's easier to slip underneath the cylinder. You've got more room uh, above the cylinder to install your foam. Okay, everyone, I have got my ballast, my lead ballast in the keel of the boat. I've got foam um, at the waterline or below, uh, nestled in uh, about the saddle tank area. And then I also put some additional foam uh, in the back because the, the back of the cylinder is the heavy part. Uh, it's got all your drive motors and everything in there, so I added some additional foam in the back. Now, um, I'm sure there's a way that you could scientifically go through the exact uh, amount of, of foam or flotation that you need, um, but I kind of uh, guess, uh, based on my experience, how much to put in there uh, and where to put it. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to drop this in the water and we're going to see what it does. Uh, it hasn't seen water yet, so this is going to be sort of its, its maiden dunk uh, in the testing pool. But let's see what it does, uh, if we need to add foam uh, or add weight, uh, and we'll continue on with our trimming process. All right, here we are outside at the uh, testing facility. We got some gray skies, but I think we'll be okay uh, for rain for at least the next few minutes. Uh, I got the model uh, in here. Basically, everything is connected. Uh, and kind of ready to go. So I'm going to turn everything on. We're going to dunk it in the water and we're going to see where it floats. So let's take a look at the procedure here. We're going to turn on our radio system uh, and now we're going to turn on the model. And like I said before, it's through this remote key fob. Uh, and if everything works properly, what we should see as soon as I turn this on uh, are the LED lights to give a visual indication that the model is powered up. And there we go. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, we've got some LEDs here and here, uh, either side of the conning tower in red and green as appropriate. Uh, the other thing that I have in this uh, I want to show you really quickly is uh, the sound system. And it's kind of neat because you can control it through the uh, transmitter. I'm just going to have one sample sound. Hopefully you can hear the sonar ping. And there are uh, a ton of different sounds uh, that are capable of being loaded. Uh, and it's all customizable. Uh, comes preloaded with like 20 different sounds. It's a, a sound kit from Engel uh, out of Germany. So there's a waterproof speaker I'll be showing you guys a little bit later on when I go through the overview of the internal layout. Uh, but without any further ado, let's dunk this thing in the water and see what it does. All right, based on what I am seeing here, we are gonna wanna add a little bit of weight uh, on the port side. Um, and, and I think what I wanna do is take some foam out uh, of the back there, and that's gonna make it pretty darn close to perfect surfaced trim. So let me put it back on the stand there. Uh, I'm gonna remove uh, that foam from the back, add a little bit of weight uh, on the port side, and uh, then we'll do it again. 
All right, everyone, so where we are at right now, I have managed to um, trim the boat so that actually um, it's at good surface trim and it's at good submerged trim, but there's something I don't like about it, and uh, that is that it does not have a lot of static stability. With that, and, and what I mean by that is it, you know, it, it, it'll sit, you know, nicely, and then it'll list to one side, and it'll sit nicely, and it'll list to the other side, which tells me it's balanced. Um, but there is not enough uh, of a writing moment created between the weight of the ballast and the flotation of the foam to keep it oriented vertically without any outside forces acting on it. So uh, the solution is fairly simple. Uh, more weight, more foam. So uh, what I'm going to do is pull it back out of the water, let it dry in the shop, and I'm going to add some more ballast in the keel, uh, some more foam under the water line. Uh, ideally, those two weights and, and, and flotation amounts will cancel each other out, but spaced far enough apart, create a writing moment to keep this thing nice and stable in the water. So let's see how that turns out. Okay, everyone, as you can see, we are back at the uh, Top Secret Test Facility. We've got the U-boat in the water, and it is floating at uh, what I am going to say is a perfect surface trim. Uh, the water line is directly in line with the painted uh, water line that I put on there, uh, which is exactly what we're looking for. Um, what I ended up doing was uh, basically doubling the weight in the keel, uh, and then adding the appropriate amount of foam to compensate. And the good thing about this was because I had the trim perfect, uh, surface trim perfect to begin with, I could simply perfectly calculate the amount of foam that I needed depending on the amount of weight that I added. What we're gonna do is get this guy to uh, submerge with our ballast system and we'll see how it goes. So. It's descending here right now. The vent uh, is open. It's descending on a fairly even keel. Actually, a perfectly even keel. Now, the thing about these fleet boats, they got a flat deck and you got a lot of surface tension um, on the deck. And sometimes they take a little encouragement to dive down. Now, in practical application, you're going to have the dive planes. You'll pull it down. The water will wash over. Static dive, uh, typically they need a little bit of uh, help just to get past that point, but we'll see what it does. Venting the tank a little bit more. And just gonna give it a little shake here just to get that water over. There we go. Vent a little bit more. As you can see, it's it's going down almost dead level. Maybe just slightly bow high, but I uh, can take it down just a little bit more. And I'm going to say that that is just about perfect. That's about where I would want it to be with just the um, conning tower protruding uh, from the water. And this is done for safety's sake because if you uh, lose signal or if something goes catastrophically wrong, the sub will always have positive buoyancy. Um, I do all of my builds that way. Uh, if the owner so chooses, you can add more weight in the keel. It'll sit a little bit heavier in surface trim, but uh, you'll get that static dive capability. Don't recommend it except for experienced uh, RC boat operators. Um, but what I'm gonna say is, uh, this thing is, is ready for lake trial. So uh, trimming is done. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in. Um, look for lake runs uh, to follow very shortly. Uh, again, this is Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks. Thanks for checking in with me. Uh, I will see you soon.